Thanks for joining in. Perfect. Nice Zoom. Thank you for that. Thank you. So we have a question about the current um, that is down here in the deep sea. Is there much of a current right now, or how strong is it? Doesn't look very currenty. Just, just no. It's not too bad of a current, but sometimes it gets a little bad depending on uh, you know seabed conditions and what have you. But now it's quite calm, quite relaxed. Go for zoom, please. Karen, also there was a question for you specifically. Um, do you have a pilot's license? Um, well, I mean, technically I have a pilot's license for a s small aircraft, uh -huh. uh, just like a Cessna 172, but um, it's not a prerequisite for being an ROV pilot. Right, and then they wanted to know what would be your dream plane to, fi to fly. Do you have a dream plane that you really want to? Oh man, I mean, <laughs> that's such a big question. You can come wipe this. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the the most fun aircraft to to pilot are the ones where you're kind of doing the most because that's when you're like actually using your piloting skills. Um, I haven't flown uh, like twin engine or anything like that, but I think the the more complicated the aircraft gets, the more automated it is, and I don't think that's quite as fun to me as like the old planes where you're really like going along and, and you're really feeling out the, the plane and, and weather conditions as well. So um, Dream Aircraft is probably like the oldest plane with like the most character. Nice. I to love me. that. I like that too. Definitely going to ask you some more about that later during lunch or something. Okay, cool. <laughs> we'll go for Zoom, please. few dead sponges here and maybe a shrimp perhaps on that sponge shrimp associate like bridge huh yeah shrimp you can see that you can add Thank another you. five zero meters zero nine zero Okay, do we find old fossils along the seafloor and do we collect them for analysis? Um, yeah, so on this expedition we've collected several uh, feral manganese encrusted beaked whale bones, um, their beaks. Uh, whether or not they're true fossils, I think that's still up for debate, if I'm not mistaken, um, but I think that's kind of the more uh, the thing that we come across the most often in terms of any sort of fossil-like item. Um, but I believe it was last year in the same region around Johnston Atoll where um, we unknowingly collected a megalodon tooth. So it looked like a rock. We thought it was kind of cool. We picked it up, brought it onto the lab on the ship and discovered that there was a megalod megalodon tooth fossil inside of that rock, so you really, really never know what we're going to find. <sighs> Go for some, please. More Minidopsis. Uh, squat lobsters. These si these particular this particular species is often associated with these uh, dead or hydroid covered um, sponges or sometimes corals. Never on the live corals. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Can we take a closer look at the this uh, unbranched thing? Yes. Likely a coral. Um, I'm trying to find the that coral, unbranched coral that I was interested in sampling a while back. But these are all uh, unbranched bamboos, which is not the target. Okay. Not the target. Thanks. Okay. All right. Some of our folks online want to know more about us and our backgrounds. So how long have we been in our professions? How long have we been studying coral or studying rocks or um, being a teacher or educator like I am. So um, I'll start. I first got hooked um, when I was five, <laughs> when I saw the movie Free Willy. Uh, really, really, really loved um, killer whales ever since then. So killer whales, any type of whale, it's my absolute favorite. I volunteered at aquariums um, in my teenage years, went to school for um, aquatic biology, got my bachelor's degree. Um, and currently I work at the California Science Center in Come Los on. Angeles as an informal educator. So uh, yeah, applied for this position to be a science communication fellow and here I am on the ship for just about a month. So that's how I ended up here and a little bit about my my background, if anybody else wants to chime in. Am I going to have to be the teacher that calls on people? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll go, I guess. Okay. Um, I don't know, it's kind of, yeah, funny question, but I'll answer it like you answered it. Um, my story is I like fell in love with the ocean when I was three looking at some fish in Hawaii on a little pink boogie board with a porthole in the middle because I couldn't swim. Um, and then grew up watching David Attenborough and Planet Earth and Blue Planet and all that kind of stuff and coming to California and seeing the beach when I lived in Colorado. Um, how long I've actually been in this is kind of a funny question because maybe like a year I went straight from undergrad to get a master's in environmental science. Um, and during that, I was working, but I just graduated in June. So a year to a couple months, um, technically, but also a lifetime. <laughs> Can we zoom there again? Yeah. yeah, it's definitely like a lifetime passion, but I guess I, it's hard for me to pin down exactly like, oh, this is when I became a scientist or like yeah. this is when, you know, it's just kind of, it's always, okay. so the passion's always been there. This is not the target, but it's closer. Uh, cool. So that's this is a primnoid, um, unbranched coral called Candidella gigantea, um, which is extensively sampled from throughout the Pacific Remote Islands and this area. Um, so that makes it hard to see the differences sometimes between these bamboos and primnoids. I'm Bronwyn, I'm the data logger, and right now I'm an ocean science intern for this expedition on the Nautilus. So first time like Logan and Brittany at sea, but I grew up on Kauai in Hawaii, so I always was outside a lot and in the ocean, around the ocean. So I, right after high school, I did an environmental internship that worked with six different agencies on island but there weren't any marine ones it was all terrestrial conservation and then i went and got a degree in environmental science um i still s focused on terrestrial but i did some marine science and then uh, graduated with that and i work now with the state wildlife program and this is kind of one of the first real marine deep sea expeditions I've been able to be a part of, which has been very cool because... Is this not what we're looking for? I always wanted to see both sides, and that's why I took both classes in undergrad. 
Is um, anybody else's science portal? Yeah, How satellite might be down. Can anyone confirm? On Grafana, there should be a sat um, activity page. Steve, did you think satellite might be down? Yeah, I, I would just reconnect it, I think. At least uh, I have Wi-Fi access. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, I have internet right now. Yeah. Yeah. Might have been internet and yeah. outage. The, um, looks like. So I guess a, a follow-up question that's also coming in uh, from somebody named Stephanie. They want to know how to make it onto an expedition ship like this. Um, so they have a biology degree but they haven't been on a research vessel since the uh, early 90s. Yeah, so in order to get on the EV Nautilus, you don't need to be like a super duper expert. I am certainly not. Um, I consider myself a dabbler. <laughs> a dabbler, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I kind of, again, I have Coffee's a tremendous place. amount of passion, but kind of spread out across a wide area. So I, went to Alaska for a few summers and was a naturalist up there talking about the flora and fauna and even a little geology um, around the area nice, of yeah. southeast Alaska. So this is a colony of Norella, pretty obviously downward uh, facing polyps and uh, three branches. I think we might already have sampled this one. It's very reminiscent of the colony we sampled yesterday, uh, but it could be something else as well. But um, we've sampled quite a bit of Norella here, including some potential new species, so keep an eye out. If we see any more of these, we may collect, but uh, not this one. Okay. Did it come back, Bronwyn, or are you still waiting? Uh, it came back. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. But yeah, anyone that's interested, um, go ahead and apply. Like, uh, one of the other science communication fellows that I'm working with this uh, on this expedition, uh, she doesn't have a formal science background, but she's a science illustrator and really, really, really mm -hmm. talented at that. Um, so just if you're like a really great storyteller, if you have a passion, if you have um, really strong connections to your home community and you want to bring that excitement of being on the ship uh, to your hometown, you know, things like that, that can get you um, on the ship exploring the deep sea, so. And uh, Brittany, in addition to Science Communication Fellowship, we've got uh, a Go great through series through. of internships available yeah. from seafloor mapping Go through through through. Through. Uh, ocean science, video engineering, ROV engineering. Yep, all and kinds of avenues. I'm leaving out one. Oh, ocean science. Ocean uh, science, yeah. Which is how like Bronwyn uh, and Logan are participating in this expedition. Um, and then we also have, um, we'll open up applications for our uh, annual contractor you. roles um, in the fall. So, um, and that's for at sea contractors in. Uh, Navigation, mapping, ROV, video, engineering, um, data logging. Uh, so, if you're out of um, your, you know, early career, mid career, senior, um, we're always looking for for junior and senior contracting roles as well. Um, and I should have said for the internships. Internships are open to uh, community college undergraduate and graduate students as well as recent students. So. Um, 
as as mentioned, you know, there are a lot of different ways to This is Akinella Weberai. Join our expeditions. The, the common uh, bamboo coral we have uh, the tops of these sea mounts. Polyps all on one side and the either trichotomous or tetrachotomous branching. Uh, can we take a close look at this fan here? Yeah. Not sure what that is. From a distance it looked like a primnoid, but now it looks like a bamboo. Go for some, please. Okay, so this is candidella, the, the more branchy candidella, not the, the single unbranched uh, species. It's one of the most common primnoids on these sea mounts. It is a planar colony, but it has this kind of uh, branches that can can break the the, the one two D plane. Looks gives it a slightly bushier appearance. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Steve, will you uh, move your microphone just a smidge closer? You're usually louder, but I think it might be a little farther away right now. I can still hear you, but okay. practically in my mouth. Oh <laughs> well, then I'll turn you up a little bit. That's fine. Okay. Like, I couldn't possibly. <laughs> yeah, so as we are cruising along down here, uh, we're seeing lots of what uh, some folks in the chat are calling sticks on the seafloor. So those are we actually... Drop. Can we drop a target here that and call it like Nugget <laughs> Ridge Interface? Nugget Ridge <laughs> interface. Nice. <laughs> um, so these are not sticks. They are um, actually dead uh, fragments of sponges. Yeah. Probably mostly Boreids and and these Tritopleura species. Um, it seems like they resemble the Boreid morphologies more. Um, Go for some please. But there's such a diversity of sponges here. When they die, they lose kind of the defining characteristics we use to put them in families or genera. This one is a Chrysogorgia colony, golden coral. It looks like there's one squat lobster in there. We've collected a fair number of squat lobsters on this dive, uh, some with their associate colonies. So back to those uh, sponge skeletons, basically, that we're seeing. It just takes a really, really, really long time for those to degrade. So um, it kind of looks a bit dramatic, but it's, it doesn't necessarily mean that there is some mass dying of sponges. It just takes a long time for those uh, skeletons to break down. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh I think in the deepest parts of the ocean, you can end up with things called um, silica oozes. Do you know anything about silica, silica oozes on the deep ocean floor? Silica, like oozes? silica oozes that are like the remains of like diatoms. No, kind of like thing, that accumulate in the in the deeper parts of the high latitude oceans. Like I mean, that's silica, like silicious ooze, ooze right? Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure that those are just you know. It's a great band name. A silicious <laughs> ooze. <laughs> uh, yeah, As opposed I, to a silicious <laughs> ooze, which is something <laughs> totally different. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that it's just uh, the remains of, like diatoms and other silica-based organisms. Uh, I've always wanted to see it, but we don't get that here. I don't think. Yeah, um, and mostly because of the temperature, right? Uh, and higher latitudes can't support carbonate life or carbonate in general, not carbonate life. Go for some, please. Carbonate remains. This photo in still cam or uh, cinema cam looks exactly like a highlight from last year, huh. almost perfectly. Wow! It's like it's like we've been here oh before, yes, almost. Bridge now. 
Bronwyn, somebody in the chat wants to know more details about what tools do you use as a data logger? Yeah, so um, there's a C log portal that we use uh, as a data logger, as a navigator, as a science communication fellow, and as a science team. There's different buttons to essentially make different observations. So I'm cap I'm taking screen captures of like the video that's being live streamed. I'm updating the dive status, uh, whether we're on deck, on bottom, descending. Um, there's a button for engineering, like if there's issues, uh, observation, sampling, and other than that, I also have the OET science portal open, which... There's an I-4 uh, bamboo, like a candelabra-shaped colony coming up on the left, upper left. Upper left. I can see it in the cinema cam, and you uh, might want to zoom on that. We okay. started to see more of these... Um, I-4s just over the past maybe, you know, let's say, hour or so. Um, we saw one that looked like a trident uh, about half an hour ago, or maybe a little bit less. So this is kind of the more mature growth form of that, um, or older growth form of that, where it has more branches and more, um, yeah, more branches and is usually a bit taller. These are also extensively sampled throughout the Pacific Remote Islands. Um, we see them almost everywhere. Uh, Kingman Palmyra, um, Johnston, Howland Baker, uh, and up through the monument, the other monuments. And there's your trichotomous branch right there. Oh, we're talking about branching patterns. Okay, thanks. Uh -huh. Very cool. I do wonder how um, calcium carbonate sediments here, Go for some, please. if they experience dissolution over time, or is their accumulation just more rapid than their dissolution? Or I think as long as you're above the lysocline, then yeah, you, you're, you're accumulating more. Once you're in between that lysocline and CCD, then you know, you're basically in equilibrium, and then below that CCD, um, Dissolution is the. Oh, there's our mechanism. there's a black coral. Finally, okay. just caught so that one. one. So Do you want to zoom on that? Yeah, this might be the first black coral of the. Well, certainly of the past two watches we've uh, we've been on together. Actually, no, we saw one black coral of heteropathies um, deeper, but haven't seen one for the past several hours. Sorry, can you circle it again? Or have yep, I lost it's it? right on the lasers. Oh, okay. That's in our This is bathypathies. And dun da 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 has the polychaete worm. The one nice. that we the spent worm. a lot of time. The worm. Yep. So this is probably bathypathies pseudo alternata. Um but yeah, it's almost certainly the same one that we sampled uh, a few dives ago. Bathy pathies. 
science, in case you're curious, it kind of looks like the current might be coming from the uh, northeast. Great. Thank you. Certainly interested, always interested. Sometimes we're going upsides of sea mounts and the currents can do a full 180 reversal depending on how much vertical we cover. And it's really interesting to see how Focus those in, patterns change. Okay, Nick, um, we did have a question about uh, sedimentation. So Thank can you, you tell us about the rate of sedimentation accumulation around this area? Yeah, so uh, like Steve and I were just mentioning, uh, carbonate uh, sedimentation can vary depending on latitudes. Um, but in this area, um, in these latitudes I should say, uh, you can see um, a pretty high accumulation of sediment, not so much on these seamounts, but in some large igneous provinces, uh, kind of like um, Ong Tong Java or Manahiki Plateaus, you might see up to 100 or 200 meters of, uh, of sediment. So I'm not sure what the rate is on that, but those are at least over 100 million years old. So, um, you know, you can, you can expect to see quite a bit of sediment on the ocean floor uh, in these older features, and, and especially in the flatter oceanic basins uh, where you'll see uh, those siliceous ooze and clay deposits um, that uh, will not undergo any type of dissolution over time. Oh. Boom again. Boom again. <laughs> I will also say, turns out that the sunrise is good today. Oh. You don't Give me one say. Second. It's good every you day. don't I know. say. Is there ever a bad sunrise? But this one storming. is pretty all right. Yeah. So viewers online, Get if you haven't well. already checked out Channel 3, that's where we usually have the cinema cam up. Uh, but also, there's a beautiful sunrise if you want to check that out. This is a Coleopagon sponge. Uh, this is the one that we're seeing quite extensively on the slope that re le led up to waypoint 3 uh, on the last watch. Form really big, um, kind of like satellite dish shaped. Uh, the sunrise sure looks like the sunset last night. It's mm. <laughs> <laughs> almost, isn't it? Like exactly the same. That does look really similar. <laughs> yeah. Are we just doing this whole thing in reverse now? Yeah. Like, what is it, Tenet style? That, yeah. oh, that movie Tenet, that happened uh, in reverse and forward at the same time? <laughs> yeah. It's a great movie. It was fabulous. No sense to me. I'm uh, sorry. I, like the movie was, it was very action packed and it was like fun to watch, but it was very challenging. Yeah. It was very challenging. I feel like that's one of those, you have to watch it again. Yeah, for sure. Is it like an age reversal? Like what's eating no. Steve Oskowitz? What? I didn't hear that. I never want to. There's something. Uh, purple? Oh no, it's a sponge. Never mind. Uh, yeah, thing? the purple thing actually could be interesting. <laughs> okay. Gabby <laughs> is dying up there. Uh, it was a, it was a Gilbert Grape reference, but he used Steve as a. Uh, what is that? Puke. I don't know. Uh -oh. uh, there she is. Yep, it's a cucumber. It's a cuke. Cool. Sea okay. cucumber. Bridge, no? You can go wide, please. Is there a particular reason why we are not taking dead specimens? Add another five zero meter or zero nine zero. Uh, to see what killed them or their age. It's really tough to tell. Um, you know, what's left over is not biologically useful. It's not living. Um, so you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell what killed the sponge. More often than not, uh, the sponges just get too large, and they fall over, and uh, they get smothered because they don't have the access to the nutrient-rich and food-rich currents. Uh, but sometimes they, they may die also uh, you know, upright, and then they degrade and fall apart over time. 
it's really difficult to tell. We are seeing just a snapshot. We don't really always have the tools to, to see what we're, uh, what we want to see, but you know, we can start to put pieces together and build patterns. And come on, Steve. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. No, you're better. You're definitely better. You sound quiet to me, so I'm... You are still, yeah. It's and better, but... Yeah, if you're talking now, I don't s I don't hear you at all. He, he was off. Awesome. I was off. Awesome. I was video. I was just trying to have a side conversation oh, I'm sorry. about my audio. <laughs> Butting on in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not staying in my own lane, like the coral are. Yeah. Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> Okay, and then, um, yeah, some viewers want to hear updates about the tuna kit thing from the other night. Yeah, it's um, it's preserving right now. Um, we still don't have any idea what it is. Unfortunately, we don't have all the tools we need to to do the proper workup of identifying every single species we bring on board, so we rely on our... Um, repositories and uh, associated scientists and curators at those repositories to help us out um, potentially identifying the material or finding uh, ways to loan the material out to scientists who may be able to make use of it. For example, for the past, uh, at least since 2013, probably earlier, all the biological specimens have been housed at the Museum of Comparative Zoology at Harvard University, which is one of the oldest um, natural history collections in the country. It actually even predates the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History. Cool. Go for Zoom, please. Bamboo coral. And come wide. Thanks. Uh, what time we got? We're 6.45, almost. So, should we review our joke from last night? Because I don't, I don't think we... Oh my god, I, I don't think Steve got the answer. Yeah, we we debriefed after the dive. We did? Okay, he, good. Or he, yeah, he and I had a, a side chat, but... Should we let the viewers know, too? I did, but on? it was kind of, it was, a, there was a lot going on with that, uh... With the sponge? With the sponge. Can we look at this curly, curly yes. question mark? Curly Q. I do have a joke that I've been waiting on, too, after we do the reveal. I think it's hilarious. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Another dad joke that my dad sent me. <laughs> yeah, so last night I Go for had a riddle, basically, and, and it was, I'm going on an island. I have my own. Yeah, this is the one. Can we take a s very small piece of this? Oh, here we go. Yes. Got Exciting. It. Okay. Uh, Come on. Do you want to hold the ship here so we don't get too far? Yeah, Bridge now. Hold position, please. And this is a snip and slurp? Uh, yeah, I think so. A small enough piece that it's not going to be a, an obstruction. We'll try it. And so, yeah, maybe less than 10 centimeters is plenty. And maybe try and line the jar up with five. Five. Got mm -hmm. it. Okay. okay. I believe this is Norella calamus, um, which is an Can you give me a zoom video? Norella I species. Can. But uh, a very small piece would help confirm. I just got them into the slip jar. Okay. Into the 
to the flush jar? Okay, go to the jar. go to the jar that we need for this one. Yeah. That maybe. Okay. Hmm. I'm mm -hmm. on five now. Okay. And I'll just make a note that there's a branch of uh, Pernoid octa coral in the flush jar. And we'll try and line it up with our sample later. Come back. So if this is Norella calamus, um, it's actually named for its colony morphology. It kind of forms like a, a fishing rod. Um, I'll read you the proper description. Can you go wide, please, video? I can. Yeah, we're all the way stretched out. Lovely snag. Yeah. There we go. That Lovely. came free. Good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one eight five. One eight five rudder. Okay, so that's you up forty percent. Are you happy with that, or shall we? Yeah, forty is a great place to start. Downlights on right now. Uh, okay. uh, we could probably just fix it with uh, a little iris too, and a zoom. That's perfect video. Stop right there. Okay. One piece nice. in, two pieces. There, there it is. Okay, so I can yeah. turn off. Okay. All right. Good job. We got a sample in the flush. We got a sample in five. <laughs> Our <Stark laughs> system is working again. <laughs> Great. Great. What more could you want? Pretty Very much. Cool. Yeah. Honestly, a rock. A rock. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's <a rock. laughs> so um, while we're sitting here, I have a very important question for you all. What is made of leather and sounds like a sneeze? A shoe. A shoe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> By the way, it's been 250 meters since our last rock. You don't say. Oh. I, I just did too long. <laughs> Actually, I just did say. Yeah, sure did. Yeah. Okay. Maybe when we come up on the Dallas field, if you yeah. insist. <laughs> well, we've got to let her get ahead before we do another move, so. Just catch up. Oh, I'm uh, having intermittent chat loss again. Mm. Not sure what's going on. So, yeah, the. Um the code to get onto my island, my island. You just had to say something that had two letters Downlights coming off um, together. So, for example, an apple can come on my island, but not a strawberry. Actually, yeah, a strawberry, a strawberry <laughs> can go. <laughs> a strawberry can go. Uh, a star could not go on my island, but a moon could, and so on and so forth. No are bananas. We full right? Why no not? banana. We are. <laughs> No bananas. Um, Logan, our viewers notice that there is a red, green, and blue strip on Herc's arm. What is that for? Yes. So uh, we talked about that this this morning too. This is a great question. So it's to we white balance when we get down to the seafloor. 
Um, and again, as Gabby was talking about earlier, we're portraying a visual light spectrum. So that's just to help us make sure that um, we're getting the right kind of color science in our view. So that red is red, blue is blue, and green is green um, within the kind of color spectrum that we want to see under the ocean. It's just an extra check. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, did we want a rock quick soon or? Wow. No, um, I mean, it's hard for me to say no, but I, I, we just grabbed one 20 minutes ago. I want to wait another 10, 15 minutes at least. Cool. Okay. Similar depth as well in the last two dives, or two grabs rather. In that case, science, anything else? Um. Yes. Go for zoom, please. Are you no, stable? No pressure. Yeah. Ship stable. I don't know about the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, also important. Uh, da 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 da. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Can we also take a snip of this? Oh, ROV, they'd like a snip of that. A snip of this. Snip of this. A snip of this, a snip of that. How big of a snip? Can we go back for a zoom to the floor? Yes. So, uh, similar to the last one, maybe like double, double the size of the last one. One branch is fine. Uh, second, let me just get stable. It's kind of a little hill. Let's see if that works. So this is also going to be Norella, but okay. Norella SP. Um, and uh, it's these oh. these Norella, these Pernoid colonies are extremely difficult to tell apart. Uh, there's more than 40 species of Norella, and most of them are from the Central Pacific. Um, so I'm very curious. This is not Candidella. I'm sure so this is going to be another snip and slurp? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Good science. Which bucket yep. would you like this in? Cool. Um, six. 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 Roger that. And for, um, just in case, I don't anticipate it, but just in case for both the last specimen and this one, if we need to um, reuse those buckets, we can for a non uh sample. So another thing is the issue with the, uh, the flesh jar is it doesn't have a filter on it. So we may not want to run in it anymore uh, because we might just um, push whatever we've got in there out. That's true. Uh, you know what I mean? Okay, so can we sample this or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, That's just fine. a warning about the filter jar. We'll I don't think we we'll can use it, it to its exact specifications anymore. Okay. Okay. Uh, are you ready for me to go in for the sample? Karen. Good. So something like uh, 10, 10, 10 centimeters or 15 centimeters is plenty. Uh, go for Zoom video. The Steve's Eye View Cam is actually growing on me for sampling, too. <laughs> Do you want associates? Sure. Or yeah. yeah, no problem. Associates are good. So notice how when we touch the colony, the, all the polyps retracted and are pointed down. That's a good indication and confirmation of the genus Norella. There's another primnoid, or a couple of other primnoids that do similar things, but... So should I be trying to get as few, like, branches of it as possible? It's fine. The c multiple branches are okay. This is, looks good if you, if you're in, if you get what's in the jaws now.
This is 186. It's not quite at the blades yet. No. Did you call me? I said this is 186. 186, yeah. rider. Thanks. And can we get uh, down lights on? That's your forty percent. Perfect. Too. <laughs> he's getting it. Yeah, he's getting. He's getting ideas. Horse rock. <laughs> Horse rock, please. Horse rock. Nice. Very nice. Threading the needle. Yeah. Wow. Back to back, perfect corals. Very, nice. very good. So two branches making their way to jar six. Making their way downtown. One. That was the bigger piece. So, science. Yeah. Uh, anything else we want to be here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell. I think he's telling the truth. So I think we can get going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is there a squat lobster that came out in that jar? Apparently. Oh. What? Yeah, definitely squat, wasn't on the branch. Squat yeah. came Bonus in. squat. Oh. There was a squat. Bonus squat. Somewhere in the in the line, it fell out in jar six. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> no. I don't see why not. We're, yeah. We're, we're gonna need all the watches <laughs> to, to to separate out the, <laughs> the mishmash. What was what? The, yeah. the bullion bays of uh, seafood that's in the. In the jars, this this cruise or this uh, dive. Did you say the booyah base? Yeah. Okay. Giant. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Seafood stew. Instead of no. <laughs> yeah. No. What? I'm getting disapproving looks. <laughs> <laughs> Not SPL appropriate. It's in the van. Yeah. Samples. Hey, Karen or Gabby, would either one of you be able to tell us what is the grip strength of the arm that you use for, uh, to sample? Nine. Grip force nine. nine. Yep. Yes, but what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Grip force nine. Grip force nine. Four it's white knuckles. Thing. Honestly, I'd have to look it up. Uh, I mean, it's, it's going to be like a couple hundred pounds or something like that, maybe. I yeah, I don't know off yeah. the top of my head. Okay. It's you don't want to have your body parts anywhere near it. No. Yeah. It's quite strong. Or anything crunchy. Thank you. Okay. Are we happy to move ROV? Yes, please. Same heading zero nine zero. Zero nine zero. Bridge now. Five zero meters, zero nine zero, please. Where do rocks like to sleep? In the oh. seabed. Oh, cute. Oh, Did I that's get it? not that's close. Bed uh, rocks. The rock oh. bed. The, yeah, seabed. The, the rock bed. That's an acceptable rock answer. Rock. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have coffee today either. I'm doing all right. We're doing all right. Sorry, you know, you, Nick. Am I full white? Yes. Okay. Uh, no, you're no. Oh, Great you. question. Sorry. No, you're not. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> I got two lies today. <laughs> Do you know why you can't trust an atom? ATO. Oh. They make up everything. <laughs> oh. 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 I love that one so much. Yep. Hey, Nick. Uh, I don't know why you have so much trouble sleeping. I can do it with my eyes closed. <laughs> 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 
like full commitment. I really thought you were just yeah. Like, yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Can we um, can we try and cinema cam this this colony? Like, yeah. focus it up and we take some photos up and down. Yeah. So just, just get really, like from the top. Really nice <laughs> uh, sponge. Then. I'll try and keep it in focus. Yeah, no worries. I'll start at the top and just work my way down. Or do you want Look like those oh, hydroids? Those like are gnarly. It's a good view. Yeah. Oh cool. great, you're <laughs> for your rock joke a moment ago, someone in the chat said on lava sheets and pillows. That's a good one. That's a good one too, that's a yeah. Great one. Uh -huh. Nice. It's multi-layered. Yeah. multi -answered. Complex. Yeah. Mm. All right. Thank you for that. Yeah. Got some good images of those hydroids. Is that least two? Maybe Karen, two different as we of hydroids move there. away from here, um, I'll have you uh, zero the Z-bias and go dead stick. I want to make sure that we still have some buoyancy because we've taken tons of rocks and nobody's dropped a plate yet. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's zero? Yep. Just let it be for a sec. See what happens. Now look at the speed we go up. So here's a great question for the van. Um, are there any barely. developments or happenings in oceanography? or um, biology, et cetera. Let's ditch a plate. Um, that okay. you wish got it more public attention. It will stop flying as well, but we're real close to the margin here. Um, okay. I mean, oh. I, 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 I like the way it's flying fish. just now. That is a That's a great fish. Decided to come right into view for us. Did you get it, Steve? Yeah, uh, I did get a good one, yeah. Okay. Not well, as good, not centered, but good enough. Yeah. Uh, not okay. bad. I don't know if it's technically oceanography. In a way it is, but and I feel like they get a good amount of press, but I think the Ocean Cleanup is a really cool organization. I think this is a pretty clear spot for dropping the Ocean Cleanup. Yeah. Bits of metal. They've been working to collect both oceanic... Um, and like river plastic all around the world. Really cool. Yeah. Unless and you wanna do they do anything with that plastic, like make it into jewelry or something? There was some when they first started, um, I thought it was interesting. Some of the first plastic they collected they converted into sunglasses that they branded and sold. Um, I'm not sure how much of that they do now, but I think they've collected such a, a mass that they're probably figuring out other ways to do, well, other things to do with it, but the hope is that they're recycling it, reusing it. Yeah. But yeah, they're on, they've had like two or three systems. They're on system three right now, and they just collected recently, a couple weeks ago, like the most plastic they've ever collected. If their systems get bigger and bigger over time, they're basically creating this massive like seine in the ocean surface. Oh, yeah, I think I saw um, footage of that. Yeah. Massive amounts of plastic yeah. that they brought up. And then there's huge collectors that they've kind of stationed in rivers as well that collect the plastic before it even enters the ocean, which yeah. has been really big. Excellent. Hey, can I get a zoom, please? Yes, you can. Thank you. Could you come wide, please? Yep. A little bit. Perfect. Mm, and wide, please, again. Beautiful. There you go. 
Nav, can we drop a target? I'm just curious to keep track of these uh, plates. Sure, sure can. Do you want them numbered? Number? I mean, do you want to like have a number in system for no. them? Or? Do some of the life samples that we uh, collect, when we bring them to the surface, do they look different? Uh, I would say it depends. So again, there are no plants down here in the uh, deep sea region. Um, there's no light that is able to penetrate past about 200 meters. So all of these um, are living in pretty much total darkness. And so what we're seeing are actually coral and sponges. They are not considered plants, they are animals. And if we take any of any samples of those, um, yeah, I just, I think it depends on the integrity of the animal itself. Like, especially if it's a gelatinous uh, specimen, it might look a little bit different on the seafloor than it does when we bring it up on the ship. Um. Yeah. It Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Can we do the down lights off? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Thanks. What were you going to say, Steve? It depends on um, a couple of factors. Can I mean, most, down, most of the biology down here doesn't have gas-filled sinuses, so they're, you know, like fishes might, like a, like a swim bladder, so they're not going to get distended. But... Um, if there's any change in temperature, they often can get stressed out, um, which is usually the the major constraint that we try to avoid subjecting them to. And so we have two bio boxes that have um, the ability to keep uh, native temperature. And so that's often the best way we uh, reduce stress and increase the chances of recovering something like uh, in life. Bridge nav. Bridge nav. Go for zoom, please. Uh, five zero meters, zero nine zero, please. Oh, sorry, bridge. Uh, five zero meters, zero nine zero, please. Mm -hmm. All right, there is a follow up question, which I'm sure a lot of our viewers are wondering too. Um, so, any of the samples point, that we take. Do any of them make it to the surface? Um, or do they pass away due to the changes in the pressure? So. Most things come up alive. Yeah, they do. Excellent. And also the, the thing, oh. the, yeah, oh, the thing with the pressure is like, um, a lot of these animals don't have air sacs in their bodies. So the pressure doesn't really affect them because they don't have the, like, lungs like we do that that are affected by the air in the pressure and when you're at such depths. So that rapid descent isn't necessarily affecting them in terms of pressure. Right. You can come on. Is there an edge uh, to this off to the north somewhere, and are we close to it? Off to the north. Um, looks like. Curious if it's visible or not. Yeah, the edges. Uh, the, you mean the edge to the cliff there? Yeah. The edge to, yeah. yeah. There's definitely an edge. It's um, off to our port a bit. 
Okay. Um, we'd be able, it's sharp. We'd be able to look over it. If you look at the Atalanta sonar, the left-hand sonar, yep. you can see where it's all black on the left-hand side of the screen. Right. That's where it falls away. Do you want to peri periodically peek over there? Um, yeah. Is that possible with yeah. the direction we're heading? Yep. Yeah, I'll go have a look. Yeah, that'd be great. Zoom for me, please. That will help us determine kind of what the vertical structure of this might look like since it might have fallen away uh, and exposed some of the underlying rock. And come wide. For Sinjit, Sea Star. I'm surprised we haven't seen more of those. It seems like that's the first one we've seen on this watch, at least. I think there was some um, in that last coral we snipped, actually. The last coral what? Had had some uh, oh. brittle stars in it. Brittle stars? Yeah. Is it percentage a type of brittle star? Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> News to me. Uh, the percentages are asteroids. They're uh, they're related to the the cookie stars, and not not ophiroids. It's this. It's it's a kind of a similarity in evolution, um, <laughs> but they're actually two different taxonomic groups. Never mind. <laughs> they are different. <laughs> I can't trust anybody in this video. I know. <laughs> I'm looking at the <laughs> reference sheet too. <laughs> the deep sea is a weird place. It I is. mean, that I gotta preface like every single conversation I have. It's just like. The rules are meant to be broken, and they all happen <laughs> in the deep sea. Um, I love but that. But there are shallow water. So actually, Brasingids were first described from Norwegian waters and Scandinavia. Um, and and up there, there's a, a genus called Freyella um, or Brasinga, um, two different genera that are present in that area. And they're much more spiny, and they don't look like opioids at all. They look more like asteroid sea stars, but with lots of lots, lots of spines. The, the, there are opioids that we see commonly here. Um, yeah, this is great. I, any chance we can peer like uh, into the wall, or we don't have enough yeah, scope for that? Yeah, my tether's a little bit tight. Um, if we, if you want to linger here, then maybe we could bring the vessel over. Um, it's just I'm going to be like pulled quite a bit because I'm a bit yeah, far from my. That's all right. We can we can keep cruising along, kind okay. of right at the at yeah right along the crest here. Yeah, we can also change this move so that we're able to follow this ridge if you want for a while, Steve. Yeah. Okay. Um, in that case, let's do... But at, at this contour, I, uh, I think this is a really nice contour that I know next watch is probably going to want to follow up on, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think what we'll do then is like a 30-meter step due north just to get the vehicles lined up again. Does that sound good? Sounds perfect. So Steve, what are the defining differences? The plate in the middle? Yeah, it's it's can we it's replace this move with they're uh, three zero different. meters Opioids due north? Have a, have a center disc um, and even though the arms may be spiny, uh, they are, they're usually very different morphologies. Often opioids too will only have five arms and percentages will have, have multiples of that. But similarities are that they, they're both uh, plank planktivorous feeders, so they're feeding on things that float by, suspension feeding on maybe particulate matter or small invertebrates possibly. Um, but yeah, it's sometimes really hard to tell them apart. The, the one metric I kind of use, which may not be taxonomically important, but it's um, easy to re recall and remember, is that the Brasingid spines always come out at about 90 degrees uh, to the arm, and they're usually in in uh, rows that are uh, paired or close to it, and the spines are roughly the same length, um, tapering towards the end of the arm tip. Yeah. And then in the ophiuroids, you can have actually multiple different rows uh, in face. a in a in an arm at different angles uh, to the 
the main axis of the arm. Often, uh, also, Brasingids don't, don't wrap their arms, uh, so they'll they attach um, with yeah, two feet to the rock surface, uh, whereas the opioids uh, lack that, and they have to wrap their arms around structure. So mainly, if it's on a coral, it's an opioid. All curled up like that on around the coral. Usually, yeah. If you see a brisingid on a coral, it's usually planted exactly like it would be on a rock. Yep. Yes. Okay. The the tube feet on sea stars are often very visible, with it, um, at least with the cameras that we have, the opioid tube feet are, are less visible, um, so harder to see. But they do, you know, have more articulated arms. Um, for wrapping around things. If you've ever had to wrap, Thanks unwrap a, a stereoschema or something from a coral, you'll know <laughs> that you can be there all day just wrapping <laughs> the, unwrapping the arms from the branches, depending on how, how large it is. Go for some, please. That's an exaggeration, maybe, maybe <laughs> a few minutes, but not an hour or all day. These are bamboo fans or yeah, that's right. Yep. That's okay. a bamboo coral. If we have time, and if anybody is willing to do it, our uh, viewers online are wondering if they can get a quick overview of uh, the the seafloor map and like where are we on the seamount? Sure. Uh, do you want to Steve? Do you or want to do it MB proc style or? Um, yeah, you've style? got it. All right, let's put MB proc. We'll do a little tour. Can do. Oh, Channel three. Yeah, I think it's really, really cool to be able to Three see five. it. And the cinema cam is still around. It was unavailable for about a day or so, but um, just for now, we're going to be switching channel three to, I think we're going to be showing a map and then we'll get the cinema cam back up. Yep, there you go. All right, here we are. So this is uh, Kingman North Ridge, we're calling it. So if we zoom out a little bit, here's the axis of the ridge. Kingman Reef is right here, this big uh, blank splotch, but you can see the contours are very steep over there. It rises up to the surface. And we're gonna zoom in on the North Ridge here on this very long ridge uh, running east-west kind of into uh, the North Ridge summit, which is a pretty flat-topped, um, almost geo-like, uh, flat-topped seamount-like summit. And so we started our dive here at around, uh, what was this, uh, 2,400, 2,500 meters. And we worked our way up this yellow line here, passing through the saddle, where we saw the nodules last night, or nuggets, Thank you. up the steep slope, waypoint two. We passed waypoint three right around the start of our watch, very early on in our watch. And right now we're somewhere yeah, along the middle of this knife's edge ridge. Okay. This is really great, um, pilots. Uh, Along, along this, looking at the vertical community, it provides a different context. Um, Go for some some squat lobsters, too, and Chrysogorgia colonies, Forea sponges. Those are nice. Zoen Zoentherians. Yeah. So getting back to um, the dive yep. plan, we're going to continue along this knife's yep. edge ridge. We're right now we're on the north wall Come of it, on, right you. about here, if you can yep. see where the cursor is. Um, and we'll be proceeding up and along at these contours, looking at this larger steep feature to see if we can find any evidence of perhaps if there was carbonate, um, a carbonate cap on top of this large uh, seamount. Or ridge. 
and of course collecting rocks as as we need to along the way to see how the geology might change yeah all right i'm gonna oh, cool. stop my uh, mv proc tour now and switch back okay i'm gonna throw cinema cam back up because this is a beautiful spot for yeah. some closer views the sponges down there different, yeah some some different species of sponges um on the verticals and corals as well. We're seeing this more planar okay. Chrysogorgia colony, not so much the bottle brushes. Oh, Tina Four. Oh, yeah, Tina Four. In the cinema cam. Oh, I saw the Zeus cam. Yeah, the ship has stopped, but Atalanta seems to be moving, so we'll let that settle out. We might have to do another small move just to get. Atlanta a little farther so over. Yeah. If you had to characterize this rock, what would you call it? Basalt. <laughs> is, that, um, is that wishful thinking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it could be carbonate. I mean, um, oh, come on, please. Gosh, this is so Got to install that rock saw on the <laughs> um. ROVs. <laughs> Take a chunk off. Yeah. Bring it home. Rock saw That's and some laser ablation. Oh, cool, yeah. It seems like this, where there wow, is so little that. marine oh. snow, where it really That's does really look opportunistic. like. Wow. Oh, my god. Settlement gosh. right there. <laughs> That's a great view, too, with the shelf There's in the background as well. There's a pleura sponge stalk on it, two large bamboo corals, and on that, one crinoid. Wow. Look at the background. I know. I love that background. Very dramatic. Go for appropriate for the watch. Yeah, I, I could see a case being made for uh, pillow lava, I guess, in the salt, in the yeah. small, right underneath us. The dramatic overhangs are, are really a mystery to me, though. I go wide, please. It seems like it just goes straight down. <laughs> down, down, wow. down. So again, the um, the bottom is yes. at uh, 2,500 meters, and currently our depth is uh, 1,948. Do we know how? big this cliff face is. I know that 12 to 4 dealt a lot with climbing it, but it seems massive. Herc Elt says, uh, just said 34 meters. So okay. that might be off bottom, at the bottom of the cliff face, but now it says 19. That was a pretty big jump, so. 34 is okay. mm -hmm. pretty huge. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. Let me reset it. One of the things I love about the seamount environment is just the verticality that you can experience. It's yeah, it's yeah. you don't see anything like this in the continental margins. There are places where you can see it, like in submarine canyons, but it's usually not as extreme. And even in mountain orogenies, it's it's difficult to, to see these areas up close, right? I mean, it's just so dangerous and remote to get to some something like this in certain areas. Okay, so orientation-wise, uh, ROV, are we happy with where the vehicles are? Um, I'll come on. Okay. It depends on where science wants to place their emphasis. If they want to be over on this side of the cliff wall, then we should back Atalanta off more. Um, if this is just a little dip over the side to see what, what's over here, then we're in a good position. Yeah, I, I'm happy with the, the dip over the side. Uh, we're not going to go down, uh, but if we can stay along this contour and just move uh, eastward. Is that okay? 
Yep. Yeah. Okay. And if it starts to like protrude out uh, or do anything funny, uh, we'll have to jump back up on top. Sure. But otherwise, we'll just stay within the top couple meters. Okay. Well, staying on this contour is uh, Dewey 090. So I think what's been happening when we uh, when we start to move 090 is Atalanta tends to just trend the tiniest bit to the south. Okay. Um, which so will again bring it over, um, bring it back over the top of the ridge. But as soon as we stop, yeah. it drifts back north again. So let's do 080. Sure. Great. Try that. We might be able to do 090 for the next one, but 080 sounds great. Bridge now. Uh, three zero meters, zero eight zero. And Nav, when you get a chance, can you Some put a is. target for high density vertical sure. coral and sponge community? So we're seeing lots and lots of really gorgeous coral on this um, overhang. And uh, excuse me, coral as well as sponges, that's what I meant to say. Um, so when people think about sponges, usually they're thinking about something very flexible and squishy and, you know, um, kind of like the really fancy sponges that you might use for a spa day. So what kind of sponges are those? <laughs> those are probably shallow water sponges. Um, they are not glass like these sponges, and they're probably made out of a, a protein called spongin. Um, and so that that's why they're more uh, pleasant than rubbing <laughs> calcium carbonate <laughs> or glass spicules on your body. Yeah, that'd be a little too exfoliating. Yeah. You got a good eye for the associates, Karen. <laughs> Thanks. I was actually more interested in like how it's two different colors. Yeah. I wasn't sure if that means part of it's dying or just zoanthid. Incrustation, maybe? Yeah, there's two different zoanthids uh, there. Zoanthariums, a oh. uh, yellow something and a, a white something. We sampled actually both of these, uh, not these specifically, but yellow, both yellow and white zoanthariums morphs. Um, and so we'll be able to identify them from a, a previous dive. So I would say this cliff is maybe 30 meters tall here. Yeah, so uh, 30 meters is like. 100 feet for our non-metric people. <laughs> <laughs> Can we take deep sea coral samples and replant them closer to the surface? We could, but I don't think the coral would be very happy. Um, so these are adapted for the deep sea, um, much colder temperature than what they would be experiencing towards the surface. But Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, if any of them would be maybe potentially be able to survive in the sur uh, closer to the surface. Um, at this depth, I wouldn't think that any of them would survive any shallower or in any different environment where they are. If you notice, there's completely different species of corals on the verticals versus on the ridge, Yeah. which suggests that they're the species that are here are pretty finely attuned to the flow characteristics that are present in this little microenvironment. This, this, uh, this has got to be carbonate. I mean, I don't know. Looks very blocky. Um, but that said, when we're trying to do experimental work, for example, uh, can we look to the top right uh, just a little bit? There was a yellow tuft of something right here. Yeah. Let's zoom on that. See if it's a different or maybe the same zoanthid as previously. Yeah, okay. It does look to be the same. Okay, that's perfect. Beautiful yellow. Um, so we have, like I said, uh, have do have the capability of obtaining coral samples from the deep sea and bringing them back to the lab. And we have specialized systems like uh, flowing 
seawater cold rooms that allow us to uh, keep corals at the temperature that makes them happiest and doesn't uh, doesn't kill them. But uh, that's a lot of infrastructure that usually that's involved with doing that. And typically we try to harvest corals uh, for experimental purposes very close to shore. So it wouldn't necessarily be out here. Oh, there's a nice picnic on it, sea spider. Sea spider? Oh so yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but yeah. if it's uh, yeah. you're on a colder elevation like ocean to start with, they could be shallower because the surface temperature would be colder Come on, regardless, yeah. right? There's a paper here that says they can be found at 16 meters, but that seems to be in areas like Canada where it's colder at shallower depths. Yeah, that that's a, that's a, um, a phenomena, an ecological and biogeographic phenomenon called deep water emergence. Mm. Um, and yes, you can find deep water corals shallower, uh, most notably um, the areas in the Chilean fjords, Alaska um, has deep water emergence of um, or shallow water emergence of deep water corals. Uh, off the coast of Scandinavia also, you have a lot of deep water coral reefs that form uh, in waters that are scuba divable. Just watch any over But we've taken I think we'll see uh, it pretty quickly example, in Atlanta if there are some. Uh, from the Gulf of Mexico uh, as deep as 1,000 meters, maybe a, a little bit deeper not much deeper than a thousand meters and brought them back to the lab and maintained them for potentially up to years uh, in experimental systems. Yeah, Monterey Bay Aquarium also has some deep water corals on exhibit right now. And in that case, most of what we have to do is just maintain them at temperature. Um, but some funny things start to happen when you start to take up corals from deeper depths because they are adapted to uh, the pressure conditions here, and that includes every single aspect of their physiology, including, you know, how their um, molecules... It seems like we're liking being on the replicate. cliff face, so... Uh, let's see. Cliff face, please. We could probably do another 080. Yeah, great. I just can't get over how pristine all of this is. Uh, three zero meter, zero eight zero. Very impressive. A lot of these really sparsely branching fans up top, those are Akinella weberi, also the same species we were seeing up top on the ridge. But interestingly, we didn't see any of these uh, kind of planar colonies of Chrysogorgia up on the ridge. They're pretty much exclusively on these verti verticals. Um, some of these cone sponges as well, we didn't see up on the ridge, but we saw some of these Tritoplura and Polyopagon sponges. It's it's um, I like to think of the deep sea. It's 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 a really patchy environment. It's kind of like a mosaic of different types of yeah, conditions absolutely. that are favorable or unfavorable for certain species. And so what happens is you end up with a patchwork. Um, but I like to think that the animals that live here are so in tune with their environment because it is so consistent year after year after year after decade after you know century that the animals that evolved to live here in situ uh you know their larvae know exactly where they need to go to settle to find the perfect conditions that will allow them to thrive all right so we are getting some questions about coral in the chat um, one of the questions is is have you noticed that deep sea coral tend to be taller and larger than shallow water coral, and why is that? And then another question is, does oxygen play a factor in coral growth? Uh, the first one, um, sometimes, not necessarily. One of the longest corals in the world is a deep water coral. Uh, it was in a Ritigorgia observed off of the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands. At the same time, uh, 
I wouldn't call deep water corals too voluminous, but um, you know, shallow water species, for example, the reef formers may be more voluminous and, and create more volume uh, of reef material. And yes, oxygen does have a really important role to play. Um, the oxygen concentrations in the deep sea are, are lower than in the surface ocean, but they are not limiting generally in the area that we're exploring. There are certain parts um, called oxygen minimum zones that exist both along the equator and usually along the eastern margins of oceanic uh, basins that can have persistent low oxygen. And these are often areas that may filter which coral species can thrive there. Great. So again, we are seeing both coral as well as sponges on, uh, on these dives. So the coral looks quite frilly. A lot of these are um, not stony, whereas I believe that um, the shallow water species of coral, many of them are are very stony, but the uh, sponges are, the ones that we're seeing right now are actually uh, quite large. Those are the white looking um, creatures on this uh, overhang. So again, coral and sponges are mainly what we're seeing here. We haven't seen any stony corals on this dive. I think um, at this depth, we would only see cup corals. Cup corals, yeah. Like the only representatives. Wow. And I don't think we've seen any. Um, you're uh, getting to the end of your delta. This is about as far down yeah. as I'll go until we've got Atalanta yeah. off in the blue. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's the little that you were feeling there. Thanks. I was just like... So yeah, it's cool. so gorgeous, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a question about coral spawning. How do deep sea corals spawn Very with... Shallow water, um, some of them are linked, the spawning cycle is linked to the moon cycles, right? So is it the same with the deep water corals too? That's a good question. And um, I will say first that we know very little about how deep water corals reproduce and at what um, frequency they reproduce. Especially out here, I think it's reduced to almost, almost no species, maybe a couple of different species. Uh, we have reproduction, reproductive data for. Um, there's something, a metric of like 4% of deep water corals have any reproductive information that's known about them, um, which is extremely low. And it's in part due to some of the specificity required to preserve uh, those types of samples and specimens. They have to have a, a very specific preservation protocol, usually with formalin. Um, and the uh, the other part of it is the uh, work needs to be conducted in a very specific way, a very specific lab called uh, Karen, histological lab. I'll yes. do it real fast. Absolutely. And oftentimes we need lots and lots of specimens uh, for that kind of work too, because um, you need to look at the distribution of uh, both male and female colonies, which is most common in the octocorals. Uh, you have you know, male and female colonies, uh, each that produce uh, sperm or egg. So you said that as of now, there are only about 4% of coral species who have any data about uh, their spawning and reproductive? Yeah, the deep water or um, okay. yeah, the Ahermatypic species, the ones that don't form reefs, or azo yeah. azoxanthellate species, sometimes they're called too. Um, but basically, they're mostly all deep or high latitude uh, emergent coral species. Amazing. So, not much is known, um, but we do know that there is some uh, periodicity to their spawning. Um, it may be associated with um, food, food pulses that come down from the surface. That is probably the most periodic and seasonal aspect of the deep sea. Did you say food pulses? Food pulses, yeah. So when you have um, 
a bloom in the, in the plankton, for example, it creates a pulse of food that is different from any other time of the year. Usually food pulses are associated with springtime, <laughs> spring blooms uh, in the northern hemisphere. It's most well studied where that food will then fall down to the seafloor and it will arrive typically at around the same time and that food supply will be uh, a signal. Uh, oh. kind of feast feast time yeah. for corals like and they may that may be a trigger to say, hey it's time to start yeah, producing prime time. gametes. Yeah. The eating is good, let's have some babies. <laughs> <laughs> well I mean the the whole comedogenesis process can take many, many months also or even years. Um, yeah. We don't know how how frequent it is. You come wide. Thank you. Deck frog looks happy. <laughs> Deck frog. Uh, Can we replace that move with uh, one five meters uh, due north? That frog is having a great I wonder day. If some of these rocks are just <laughs> carbonate, you know, like reef structures that kind of form on, on the edge of the shelf. Is there any way we could um, back off the wall and get like a, a macro shot of all of this? Um, yeah, absolutely. I love the flying close to the wall, but once in a while we'll back off and kind of see what the structure of the rock looks like from a few more meters away. Come back. That's perfect. happy me staying at this distance or do you want me to go back to close up Steve uh, this is good if we can look down the wall kind of in the direction we're traveling okay yeah just to give us some context shot oh that very this is a again. beautiful shot I'm gonna try and get this in the still cam yeah okay Looks the really blocky. Sponges down here are just so massive. Yeah. 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 The biggest sponges I think we've seen the whole expedition. Except the ginormous sponge. That one was unbelievable. Yeah, the one at the beginning oh, of the okay. Is that yeah. what you mentioned? Okay, I thought you said I mean, like the whole month we've been out here, this is oh, yeah. uh, these are the biggest sponges that we've seen. Yeah, right. Yeah, the, the thing I was suggesting, I, Maybe it was last night, maybe it was early this morning, I can't remember, was that um, sometimes you have an island effect or an atoll effect that mm -hmm. can increase the amount of nutrients that is present locally in the surface ocean that might help fuel productivity. Um, or this could just be a really interesting ridge that you know somehow interacts you know, hydrographically with the deep waters and fuels uh, local productivity from below uh, through upwelling of nutrient-rich waters. Yeah. Okay, do you want to do another move? Okay. Cool. Yeah, this move is just something. Video, that one deck camera seems to be in black and white. Um, which one are we talking about? Low light? No. Oh, uh, wire cam? Oh, like under the A frame, yeah. It usually switches by now. Yeah, it does usually switch by now. It does that in low light conditions so that we can still see when it's dark out, but yeah. sometimes it takes ex its time to switch back to color. It's a delay. Yeah. Wow, this view in this cinema cam. Gorgeous. Steve, do you know what is the oldest species of a coral? Or some of the oldest? Oldest aged uh, species? Yeah. 
Um, I believe it's a bamboo, or, or it's a black coral sure, species. Sure. Um, that's let's been dated do over 4, like years. zero four five, 4, like twenty years. meters, maybe. How zero, far do four, corals five, go back in the rock record? Do you know? Yeah, that too. Uh, that's a good question. I I don't know uh, the paleontological so history. Uh, two zero meters, zero four five. Please. I'm seeing quite like definitely some overhang coming our way up in the upper left corner of Atalanta. Yeah. Looks like Something corals have been sure around uh, since the early Permian, uh, so 500 million years ago. Wow. Uh, middle Cambrian, sorry, so 300 million years ago. Oh, that's it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the Sclerotinians came around later, um, but the, the soft coral, sea fan like things were probably yeah. a little bit older. Um, go for Zoom, please. The thing that was always impressive to me is that, you know, we think of the ocean as being static, but the ocean has gone through various different chemical and mm. physical changes over sure. time, including, you know, oxygenation and yeah. uh, deoxygenation phases, as well as, you know, different uh, Nav, can you hold that move and just make it a 090 yeah. again? I think we've got enough Copy distance that. and too much will be too much. Okay. Zero Bridge now. And we have to remember that species um, evolved in their environment, zero, so they evolved, zero, evolved zero, into the conditions and adapt to the conditions that are present. So um, there are maybe many species that evolved in you know, paleo oceans that uh, may not be present. So Karen, can you um, in these days back sure. off the? I'm I'm looking at the tether, wow. and I want to make sure it clears yeah. this prow. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so just back off and maybe come up, and we'll get around the prow, oh and then you can gosh. dip back under. Come back. Yeah, this is a lovely spot. <laughs> it's a little hard to see how close that clearance is, but... Yeah, I mean, I think that's the Oh, yeah, that's there, it. Okay, it's not big. Nice. Great. I appreciate you looking out. I can't wait to get my hands on these stills. They're so pretty. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Good day to have the cinema cam back. Yeah. yeah. yeah it is. <laughs> it's always a good day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, or night, if you're on UTC time. Yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah, so a recap of the ROVs that we're using. We have Hercules, which is the main ROV, and then we have Atalanta, who is also assisting in this dive. So if you take a look on channel two, you can see the view from Atalanta looking down at Hercules, which is about 30 meters below. So Hercules is tethered to Atalanta, and Atalanta is tethered to the ship. So Atalanta has basically two uh, uses. The first one is to keep an eye on Hercules so that our ROV pilots can have a better understanding of where Hercules is in the space that we're exploring. And also, it helps to decouple the movement of the ship. Okay. So as the ship is moving around on the surface up here, um, Atalanta is taking the brunt of that movement. So that way, Hercules is, uh, it has some, as you can see, the tether is, uh, it has some slack to it. So that way we can control Hercules in a much more uh, controlled manner. Amazing. Samantha, some of our new viewers want to know what are you, <laughs> what are you uh, doing when you're saying 090 and deck nav and all that stuff? What are you? What's going on over there? Yeah. So I, I am a 
communicating yeah. with the bridge. Is that, that sensible? Bridge tab. Uh -huh. I'm just looking at this um, this breakage here. Mm. Uh -huh. Is there enough room there that permits a landing to poke around a little bit to kind of um. collect this rock to see if it is carbonate? That's yeah, a pretty big I'd rock. Give it a go. Bridge now. What's that? That's Which a pretty rock big rock. It? We'll see if there's anything there. Yeah. Okay. Hold position. There's the vessel. Vessel's held. Might be something in there. Uh -huh. Could try and break something off too. If it's carbonate, it should you. come off, right? Yeah, that's true. Could be able to just mm -hmm. smash it with the claw. Okay, thanks. There's some small stuff, small bits in there. Yeah, I think we can manage this. Yeah. Gabby, will this count as a spicy handover? <laughs> Lightly? Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yep. This looks like a like a teeny amphitheater. Yeah. It's Aristotle's cave. Um, Aristotle's uh, cave, still yes. Still can shadow. What? Oh, I love that shadow effect. It's so cool. <laughs> Where was your favorite dive site? Jarvis Island. Okay. That was cool. Why was that? Lots of new species, incredible terrain and topography, Thanks. and uh, very poorly explored. It's called lobster. <laughs> but if they mean on this expedition, I think <laughs> the, the shallow site outside of the uh, monument was my favorite. Yeah, so I think that was mine too. Okay, Logan, I'm getting multiple people asking about Duck Frog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's possible right now. Uh, or if it's totally possible. Okay. I'll give I'll give a quick a quick view. I knew I knew we were thinking about that. <laughs> For those curious, Science, while we what set are we up. looking at here? I want to make sure I get a look at the situation. So before I think we're the front can. porch is on top of some rocks that look small enough that we would like to collect, kind of okay. below here-ish. Oh, okay, so I should uh, actually back and talk. Yeah. Can give it a go. I think maybe this one might be doable. That yeah. one? Okay. There go. Yeah, so while we set up Deck Frog is um, the two little buoys that you Don't can see have with a lot the rope. Of time for this. We're already stretched out tail to tail. Uh, I can set the ship back. Yeah. Um, like 10 meters. Okay. Okay. Let's do that. Ten meters uh, due south. Bridge now. Uh, one zero meters, one eight zero, please. So some of this stuff that's just in front of us just now. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Right in okay. front of the ca uh, still cam, just above the house. Samantha, housing. I think the actual direction of travel of Atalanta, the issue is more that it's moving a long slope. Then oh, that so is you want it to go yeah. uh, 250. Uh, 260. Yeah, something like that. Bridge now. Oh, no, okay, cool, thanks. Could you do 10 meters at 260? Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a, bit of a challenge. Yeah, this is totally loose. I can see underneath it. Okay, where are we going? Um, right here. Okay. okay. Are you happy if I just kind of try and help her? Yeah, sounds great. Okay. Yeah, if you get your jaws like right yeah. the way down, and then I'll... Let me know if you want any zoom. Yeah, can you give me a little bit of zoom, please? Yep. That's good, Perfect. yeah. Okay, what are we going for? Uh, right here. Okay, cool. It looks, if you look in the cinema camera, it looks looser. Yeah, okay. I need to probe around in there a little bit. There it is. Oh, yep, okay. Nice, well done. This what is what snag. we get. Cool. 
Yeah, that, that'll be perfect uh, for us. Now we should back Thank off the wall and yeah. sort nine. ourselves out out there. Uh, Brown, what was the number? 187. 187. I, for one, am very impressed. <laughs> nice grab. <laughs> I think all of us. Nice flying, yeah. Okay, I need to sort out what the vehicle's doing here for a sec. Okay. <laughs> the crowd goes wild for deck fraud. Okay. <laughs> Is that what somebody said? We Wait. do we do love Duck Frog. Yeah, we're getting a lot of comments on Duck Frog. <laughs> it's not supposed to look like a goofy face, no, but we can't unsee it. Yeah, once you see it's it. It's amazing and that's Duck Frog. Yep. Would you call that rock representative of that little hook crop, you think? Or yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, might be a limestone. Very good possibility. We'll find out later on today. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you believe that our watch is almost over? We have like, here they come now. Our uh, So this was the four to eight crew. Look at the size of that is. Coming now is the eight to 12. Ten to 12 so centimeters. Again, we take shifts. Ship is stopped. Morning. You it was a, almost as spicy. <laughs> almost. <laughs> Post spicy. Uh, so in just a moment, you're going to be hearing uh, Stephanie coming on, and the rest of the four, or excuse me, the rest of the eight to twelve crew, and they're going to walk you through the remainder of this dive. So, all of you, thanks so much for hanging out. It's been fun, and we will see you on the next one. All right, have a great day. I'm trying to still even make my way back. Yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, you see, uh, Herc isn't really here. It's here, so that's why I can't see. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, it's like a 50 meter. Yeah, it's a 50 meter whatever, so. Um, shall I put this away real quick? Yeah, I'll just get over this ledge and then... I'm in what? You know what this feature? What's feature? If you long press hold, it goes into this weird mode. My arm's still half live right now. What? No, I didn't. Oh, shh. What's on earth? Okay, what's going on with this mode? How do I get out? Long press hold. It goes into a weird alignment mode. You can't hit the Zeus right now, but uh, okay. be careful when you pick it up. How do I get it out? Science, is this going in starboard bio? Yes, starboard bio. Um, I think the inside box B. Okay. Oh, can we do a little spin before? Oh, beforehand? yeah, sure. Absolutely. Is that good data? Yep. Okay, excellent. Can I? Oh, sorry. Um. Yeah, I'm. Maybe I will go with A, the forward, inboard, okay. starboard box instead. Great. Oh yeah, I always love that. Good. 
do I get to you? Is A the hard one? Good day. <laughs> little, <laughs> little off the post. That was exciting. Everything about that sample was exciting. <laughs> They're going to cut it open and it's just going to be clay on the inside. That will also be important. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> so So, change the sauce. Good to go. Yeah, let me zoom. One five meters south. One five meters south. Hello. Is that you, Trevor? Bridge. No. Hello. No. Sounded Can you like try a voice to find me, please? <laughs> Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Please, can we step one five zero meters? No, one one five. One five. One five. One five meters bearing one eight zero degrees. No, one five meters. Meters, yeah. One eight zero degrees. Yeah. So Roger, thank you. Yeah, yeah, point two, yeah. Thanks. You wanna go to port? Roger. Oh, to port, yeah. Yeah, I'm like just out of view. Just out of view. So, am I understanding right, Science, that we're going to keep contouring this for a little bit? Yeah. This I, little ridge edge? Yeah, I think the strategy here is, you know, maybe 
about 100 meters on the, the top side of this cliff. Okay. And then we'll drop over the side for another 100 meters, just kind of work our way around to uh, waypoint four and then waypoint five. All right. And explore caves if you want. Okay. So, sorry, wait, can you say that one more time? That plan? Uh, we're thinking about, you know, staying on the top side of this edge yeah, yeah. for about 100 meters. Okay. And then next 100 meters, drop down below and explore the, the cliff face. Roger. And then pop back up and keep doing that until we get to waypoint, you know, we don't have to get to waypoint four, but just kind of follow this edge all the way around. Sounds good. Yeah, so we've already got a ship move in heading south, bringing Atalanta towards Herc. We're a little stretched out right now. Uh, so we'll get it closer so we can actually kind of check this stuff out. Yeah, the previous watch just <clears throat> got a sample. will be interested to see what it is. But on top, this looks still like basalt and lava flows, but not sure what the more massive things are down below. Could be massive lava flows or who knows, it could be reef. We'll be interested to see what the rocks say. I don't see any internal down. structure that indicates Can you reef. tuck that down a little bit, please? The manip? Oh, the manip. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the 8 to 12 watch. It is our 8 a.m. to our 12 p.m. I'm Stephanie. I am tired, but we're going to push through this. Um, yeah, so I'm Stephanie Wanger, Natural Science and Children's Illustrator on board the Nautilus as a science communication fellow. Um, if now is a good time for introductions. Yeah, thanks. I like the uh, tired intro. I might just stick with that theme. Yeah, I mean, also we had the idea last night if you wanted to do your introduction in your um, first language oh, or yeah. a different language, go ahead. I don't know any other languages, so I just tired English. Back row, if you want to start off. Paula? Um, hi everyone, I'm Paula Rodriguez. I'm um, part of the science team aboard the EV Nautilus and also a postdoctoral researcher at the MCC. Hola, soy Paula Rodriguez. <laughs> eh, soy parte del grupo científico eh, aquí en el EV Nautilus. Y también a postdoc in the, en el Museo de Zoología Comparada en Harvard. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do uh, a gauge check, please? I'm Maronke Harris. I am a science manager in training. I'm also a PhD student at the University of Victoria. I am too tired to try to attempt <laughs> to introduce myself in French. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to ask Paula to translate for me. <laughs> Would you do that, Paula? Yes. Translate? Okay. In Spanish? Whatever language you want. Okay. Uh, good morning, I'm Rob Pacolini. Uh I'm the watch lead of the 8 to 12. Buenos dias, soy Rob Pacolini, um, el líder del watch de I'm also the geologic lead on the expedition. And I'm a researcher at the University of Rhode Island. Cool. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> really nice. <laughs> Front row, you want to go? Yeah, yeah, we can. Are we good on the. Yeah, we can stay there for just a sec. Let's let this settle out, and then we'll start moving along. Okay, sounds good to me. Yeah, give it, so a, give it a few minutes. Before that, yeah, let's, let's do the introduction. Hi, everyone. My name is Elias Adedimo. I'm a navigator on board the EV Nautilus. 
and I'm also a graduate student at the University of New Hampshire, majoring in ocean engineering, ocean mapping, and I love.